G'day, my name's Steve and those of you in Wilson's Creek will know me as the Chair of ECSFR, Environment and Community Safe from Radiation. Is that right? <laughs> um, so since the uh, Wilson's Creek Tower uh, was prevented from going ahead by Byron Shire Council and all the work that all of you did, a lot has happened on the global stage. Uh, for example, the courts in Italy have ordered the government to advise the population of the dangers of microwave radiation. Uh, school, the governments such as the French government and the Israeli government and others are moving to at least protect their children. Um, looking at uh, Wi-Fi in schools, removing that and also uh, banning cell phones, uh, smartphones. Um, then we also have bills in America, in Oregon and California, similar. So there's a momentum gaining across the world that people are starting to wake up and realise that um, the inconvenient truth that this technology that we all love is harming us. Now, of particular interest to myself and I'm sure you is a recent uh, United Nations meeting. So what we have is the, uh, the General Assembly of the United Nations very recently met and that was the Human Rights Council. And I'd just like to read you a few extracts from this document that was tabled at the UN as an official UN document. We'll start with the, the bottom line. So, 5G, together with previous generations of wireless technology, that's 2G, 3G, 4G, etc., is an experiment on humanity that constitutes cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment under General Assembly Resolution 3946 of the 10th of December 1984. The deployment of 5G violates over 15 international agreements, treaties and recommendations, including Article 7 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which derives from the Nuremberg Code of 1947. It also violates the Declaration of Helsinki of 1964 and its several revisions, as well as other international guidelines that have been translated into national laws in various countries. Wow. Okay, that's, that's what we're dealing with. Now, like myself, when I first got involved in all of this, you probably, you, maybe your friends are thinking, oh, come on, this can't be true. You know, the government, why would the government want to be a party to intentionally harming our children and ourselves? And, and so we have what's called cognitive dissonance, where people just don't want to accept something as a fact. And, that, and that's a big barrier to overcome. And it works in the favour of, of industry and government and others. Well, this UN document explains a little bit of that. And so I'll quote again. Those responsible for keeping this industry in check, including the World Health Organization, US Federal Communications Commission, and others, national and international bodies, have not ever been forthcoming about the dangers of radio frequency radiation. Instead, they have protected industry's interests with total disregard of known health impacts. Working groups focused on health facts of electromagnetic radiation at the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, that's ICNIRP, the Scientific Committee on Engineering and Newly Identified Health Risks, the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers, the International Electrotechnical Commission and the International Telecommunications Union are notoriously plagued by conflicts of interest and or directly working with industry. That's not me saying this, this is a document table at the UN with appropriate references. Despite the unequivocal consequences, the media are still actively misleading the public. All the elements of a scientific experiment gone wrong are present, along with a profit and liability motive for a cover-up. Economic interests, now worth over $3.4 trillion in the US in assets, have prevailed over public health. They, um, they draw the analogy to the tobacco industry. So they talk a little bit about this and how the tobacco industry's product, or rather, they quote um, the tobacco industry internal memo where they say, doubt is our product. But then they go on to say, the techniques are still extensively used today by telecommunications companies. The, this parallels with tobacco industry are striking, although the tactics subsequently improved with relentless lobbying. However, this is where the comparison ends. Electromagnetic radiation has no smell. You cannot see it. It is everywhere. You cannot escape it. 
Thus, well, unless you're in Wilson's Creek and you turn your Wi-Fi off. Thus, the consequences of bias science combined with the in impalpable nature of EMR are far more insidious and far-reaching. Now, so in addition to the health on humans, and um, for those of you that uh, haven't necessarily been following that, this um, UN document does list a, a few of those things, and again, I'll just quote, in humans, there is clear evidence that EMR is causing not only cancer, but a wide array of debilitating ailments, including cognitive impairment, learning and memory deficits, neurological damage, miscarriage, impaired sperm function and quality, obesity, diabetes, tinnitus, impacts on general well-being, alteration of heart rhythm and cardiovascular diseases. Okay, so, um, and then they say at a cellular level, the stem cell, it impairs stem cell development, gene and protein expression, increases free radicals, oxidative stress and DNA damage. And for those of you that have seen the um, film by Dr. Russell Cooper on our website, you will see he talks about the damage being done to the little girls particularly and, and the DNA in their ovaries as they're developing in school. And yes, it's, it is hard to accept. It's, um, you know, it's, it, it is a challenge and, and it's not just one device. We've got the cumulative effect. You know, we, we've got towers everywhere. We've got in a classroom or a work situation, we've got people with their phones on everywhere. There's Wi-Fi computers, Wi-Fi printers, um, Wi-Fi routers. They're, they're just, it's that cumulative effect. You know, there's cordless phones um, and so on and so forth. The Bluetooth, the, and it goes on and on. Um, the UN also go on to say, or this UN document that's been tabled, that effects in children are important and include some of the above, plus autism, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder and asthma. You know, this isn't just about the kids, it's also, it's about all of us. It's about the workers, occupational health and safety. As I understand it, regardless of what the insurance policy says, legis insurance legislation covers these sorts of things. These um, progressive diseases, I think they call them. You know, we also have the issue that, um, you know, some lucky people are not as affected as others, but some are absolutely debilitated, and that's called electrohypersensitivity. It's a, it's a diagnosed condition and a recognised condition. In fact, I think uh, one of our government, APANZA's um, uh, health leaflets, advises people to get, uh, says it can be disabling, and to get medical advice on this matter. Now, w talking about disability, let's just look at schools. For, for a moment. You know, if, if I'm aware of some parents in the area, their children have been to the doctor, they have itchy eyes, they have problems concentrating, some have migraine headaches, etc. And um, I think it's important at this point to note that if your child is uh, in a school surrounded by Wi-Fi and cell phones and is struggling with, um, with school, then your child, or the school rather, and the Department of Education may be discriminating against the child's right to education on an equal basis with other students as they would be preventing accessibility to the school. If your child is really struggling then they're not able to go to the school, they're not able to continue their education and you know there are disability, there's a Disability Discrimination Act that covers this, there's also disability standards for education. So you know we need to start looking after and protecting our kids and, and giving them an equal right to education um, and not making them think that, you know, there might be something wrong with them. Well, you know, if there is, perhaps it's actually the school environment that's causing it. Now, let's look closer to home um, and look at our Panza, who is the, the regulator. I'm just going to flip to the board to give you an indication of the context of how our Panzer fit into the whole scheme. And then we're going to go back to our Panzer and, and question their authority and their expertise. Um, and I'll preface this by saying that we have written to education ministers, communication ministers, right? Um, health ministers, talking particularly about the health of children. And they've all come back saying, a Panzer tells us it's safe. Well, guess what? A Panzer have a disclaimer that says, nothing contained in this site is intended to be used as medical advice 
and it's not intended to be used to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any disease, nor should it be used for therapeutic purposes or as a substitute for your own health professional's advice. A Panzer does not accept liability for any injury, loss or damage incurred by the use of or reliance on the information. Right, so on one hand they're advising the government, yeah, yeah, it's safe for kids. But on the other hand, if you read the fine print, they're saying, we're not accepting liability for anything. You know, and, um, but let's not forget that all of these government departments, indeed the government, are actual corporations, and um, that's a story for another day. They also talk about the quality of their information. That people should obtain any appropriate professional advice relevant to their particular circumstances. A panzer cannot guarantee and assumes no legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, currency or completeness of the information. So on one hand we have a panzer telling the government it's safe. On the other hand we have people like you and I going to our doctors and the doctors telling us, you know what, you've, you've got a reaction to this microwave radiation, you've got a condition. And then when we go back, following the advice of a panzer, which is to seek independent medical advice, what do they do? They ignore us. So we have a bit of a problem here, and maybe this is why. Let's look at the whiteboard. Okay, so where does a panzer fit into everything? And there's a quote that goes something like, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And this is very tangled and confusing, but let's try to give a very quick overview. So we've got Australia over here, the rest of the world over here, industry overlaps. Um, as far as the rest of the world goes, there's the World Health Organization lobbied by industry. But in order to arguably protect themselves from liability, they have classified microwave radiation as a 2B potential carcinogen. That's with DDT and lead and so on. However, um, there's enough body of evidence out there to suggest it is a real carcinogen, but that's where we're at at the moment with the World Health Organization. Some jokingly call them the World Harm Organization. Um, then we have industry lobbying ICNRC, which is the global body responsible for standards. Um, you know, what's a safe level? That's the world. We come to Australia and we have the industry lobbying our government. Our government sets, the ministers set policy and that's handed down to the bureaucrats who enact the policy. And they have mortgages, they have school fees, they have probably car bills and so on and so forth. So job security is important. They do what the minister tells them. Um, so some of those government departments that are relevant to us, and there are many, I mean, in this case, we're talking Department of Health, we're talking Department of Education, we can go on and on and on. But the key ones are ACMA, the Australian Communication Media Authority. So they regulate um, the spectrum, you know, all the little waves that bounce around. They regulate that. And they also regulate the media. So, you know, you might be asking, well, why don't we hear about this on the media? Have a good think about that. And also, ABC Catalyst was the last one I'm aware of that really did a, a, a big expose on the called Wife Ride. Um, not long after, the head of that program was sacked and the whole team was disbanded. Don't upset certain people is the message I think that was trying to provide. Um, so somewhere related to ACMA, but not really reporting to ACMA, just kind of in a little cloud of its own, we have a panzer. Now, a panzer are Australia's health authority. But guess what? They don't employ any doctors. Um, so they get their levels from ICNA, their standards. And they do their own research. So these people that aren't doctors research all these medical papers and determine that it's safe. Um, we have a number of letters from government ministers, education and so on that I mentioned earlier, where they tell us, a panzer tells them it's safe, okay? Go back to that disclaimer I mentioned earlier, where a panzer says, essentially, we don't know. And we accept no liability, but we'll tell you it's safe anyway. Um, so they set the standard. The standard is not really a standard. You won't find it with an AS, Australian standard, in front of it. It's a guideline, but it's called a standard because that makes it apparently something that you comply with because you don't really comply with the guideline. Industry are required to follow the guideline, but 
the forward of the APANZA pseudo standard makes it very clear that industry are responsible and for their own risk assessments, etc. So it's just a convenient word that makes it sound official, but really the, the industry is following a guideline and not actually following the standard, because if they were following the standard, they would manage the risk. And maybe that's why the annual reports mention harm from EMR as a, um, as a uh, material risk, because it could send the bankrupt if it was realised. The liability is enormous. And over here we have doctors, scientists, lawyers, and a body of evidence that's kind of floating in space at the moment, but is increasingly marching against this machine. And I mentioned the World Health Organization paper made reference to the tobacco industry. Um, you know, that's the sort of level of influence and power that, that we're up against here, just to protect our own children. And I'll, I'll conclude by saying that you know, a lot of people that work up here have kids. And so you wonder, you ask yourself, well, why? I mean, it's known that in Silicon Valley, a lot of the people there apparently do everything they can. They actually have policies that our nannies have to sign to keep um, any Wi-Fi devices away from their children. So there are people that are involved here that are in the know, that do protect their kids. But a lot of people up here and a lot of people here have no clue. They really don't. And they're not intentionally being mean or nasty. They're just following the advice that they're given. So, anyway, let's see what the future holds.